good afternoon in this webinar we'll be discussing about the importance of humidification in neonatal respiratory support we'll be covering this presentation under the following headings we'll discuss some basic concepts regarding humidification we'll also know what is humidification what are its different types what are the methods available to humidify the medical gases certain practical tips to ensure proper humidification and finally we will learn how a humidifier works during normal breathing when we breathe air the air takes moisture and humidity from the respiratory mucosa of the upper airways especially the nasopharynx and when we exhale the same water vapor and heat is returned back to the mucosa therefore nature has provided us with a inbuilt humidifier therefore remember that if lung is the ventilator the nose is the humidifier and we should always remember that we cannot ventilate in neonatology unless and until we warm and humidify the gases optimal temperature and humidity is important to maintain the integrity of the mucosal clearing system the respiratory tract thereby it's important to preserve gas exchange and decrease the risk of infection by clearing the secretions and contaminants which are trapped by the mucosal layer and are then taken out by the cilia into the nasopharynx in a cephalic direction which are then absorbed and swallowed and of this excreted there are some physiological limitations in neonates in the form that their mucosal transport system is immature and is less efficient we all know that neonates especially the preterm ones are immunologically immature and mucosal system is the only barrier against microorganisms in these neonates before moving further we should know certain terms humidity is the amount of water vapor present in the gas it is of two types absolute humidity and relative humidity absolute humidity is the amount of water vapor in milligrams per liter of the gas at a given temperature relative humidity is the actual amount of water vapor present in the gas relative to the maximum it can hold at that temperature and is expressed in percentage isothermic saturation boundary is the level at which the air reaches core body temperature and is fully saturated with water vapor in normal breathing it has been shown to be at the level of the main stem bronchus but the level varies depends on the disease the heat and moisture content of the respiratory gas and the type of the breathing dew point is the temperature at which the inspired gas is fully saturated with water vapor that is it has 100% relative humidity it is important to know that if we cool the gases below the dew points they lose water vapor in the form of condensation now why do we need humidification we need humidification whenever we bypass the natural humidifier that is the nose or the humidifying capacity of the natural humidifier gets overwhelmed for example in non invasive ventilation when we give high flow gases also the medical gases which we give contain almost no water vapor and are relatively cold compared to our body temperature therefore when the dry gases is given to a neonate the dry gases take up the moisture from the mucosa which leads to the drying of the aqueous layer because of the drying of the mucosa and because of the thinning of the aqueous layer the cilia beat frequency decreases remember that transient lack of humidification may be reversible but if the lack of humidification continues 
the cessation of ciliary activity is irreversible. It further leads to inflammation and slowing of the mucosa. And subsequently, it leads to secondary surfactant inactivation, decrease FRC and atelectasis. As the mucosa gets eroded, the isothermal boundary gets progressively shifted to the peripheral airways and the extent of mucosal damage extends into the terminal airways. What is ideal humidification system? Ideal humidification system is one which is able to humidify gases at 37 degrees Celsius and with a relative humidity of 85 to 100%. It should have a heated circuit to deliver gas at that set right relative humidity and temperature. Ideally, it should be servo controlled. There should be no rain out in the respiratory limb. It should work for both low and high flow devices and it should not infer interfere with the pressure, flow delivery or monitoring systems. It should be cheap, easy to use and energy efficient. Now, what are the devices for humidification? They can use broadly be divided into two categories that is active humidification and passive humidification. Active humidification is predominantly provided by the routine humidifiers which we use in our NICs. And for artificial humidification, we have heat and moisture exchanges, also called as artificial nose, which is not commonly used in neonatology, but is more used in pediatric and adult population. And third one is by the nebulization. However, nebulization seems impractical because there is dispersion of the small droplets of water in air and these droplets of air are capable of carrying infectious, in, infectious agents and other particulate matter, therefore increasing the risk of infections. The common humidifiers which we use, they generate a gaseous distribution of water in air. Therefore, the water vapor size is very minute and is therefore unable to carry infectious agents. It exerts a gaseous pressure which is equivalent to the partial pressure of water. Whenever the air is fully saturated with water vapor, it exerts a pressure of 47 millimeters of mercury at 37 degrees Celsius, which corresponds to a water vapor mass of 44 milligrams per liter. Now, what are heat and moisture exchanges? They are also called as artificial nose because they are designed to recover part of heat and moisture from the expired air and in turn this is used for subsequent breaths during inspiration. They use a low thermal conductivity sponge like material which is present inside the plastic housing. It is predominantly used in pediatric and adult population and the experience in units is very minimal. There are problems of clogging and dislodgement and it can lead to increased resistance and increase in dead space in the circuit. Certain HMEs are covered with bacteriostatic material or they come with bacteria and viral filters to decrease the contamination. Aerosol application generates a water particle size of around 1 to 10 micrometers and they get dispersed into the respiratory system by impaction or sedimentation. There is a risk of overhydration and hypothermia and there is risk of increased resistance. It is almost impractical for use in the neonatal population. There are certain possible issues which can happen with humidifiers and one should be aware of them. If the temperature, especially in the manual humidifiers, the temperature is not set appropriately or there is malfunctioning of the humidifier, it can lead to both hyper and hypothermia. There can be underhydration and mucus plugging if the humidification is not adequate. There can be increase in the dead space leading to hypoventilation and there can be thermal injuries and sepsis because of the condensate, because of the raining out, the condensate can get contaminated with the microorganisms and the same condensate can then go into the respiratory system causing pulmonary infections.
some mist in the spirited limb is always desirable, but rain out should be avoided in spirited limb. If it is there, it signifies under humidification. Some practical measures to prevent rain out in the inspirator limb is to use a heated wire circuit and the temperature probe which is at the distal end should not be under warmer or incubator because it will give a false high reading to the humidifier, humidifier and the heater output will decrease or it can be covered with non insulating material to prevent false indication of high temperature. Some water in the expiratory limb is normal and these days we have dual heating wire circuits where the heating wire is also available in the expiratory limb which prevents condensation or in other circuits there is a trap which traps the water and it has to be removed periodically. The humidifier should always be set at 37 degrees Celsius and one should always prefer a servo control humidifier over a manual. So in this figure we can see that this is the humidifier, this is the base of the humidifier, this is the water chamber. So the heater plate under this water chamber heats the water inside this chamber and generates water vapor. Whenever this air exits this chamber, it is heated, it is heated to a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius and 100% latent humidity. The heating wire present in the inspirated circuit further increases the temperature by 2 to 3 degrees Celsius to account for the loss of temperature in the Y piece and the endotracheal tube. So that when the gas reaches the lung, it is at the core body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. The expiratory circuit usually has either heating wire which is called as dual heating wire circuit or it comes if it, the heating wire is not there it comes with a trap which collects the condensate and has to be removed periodically. These are the panel of the humidifier in which we set the temperature and these are the different heating elements which will be explained further in the coming video. So in this video, we'll be explaining how a humidifier works. So here we are not promoting any brand, but this is what was available with us. So this video has been taken with this brand. Otherwise, we do not promote any brand in this video. Which is connected to the power supply. And this is the humidifier chamber. The blue ones are the inspiratory limbs. This is the expiratory limb. This is the Y piece connecting inspiratory and expiratory limb. This is the flow sensor and this is the pressure sensor. We also have two wires. This is the temperature sensor, which is again attached to the inspiratory limb. And this is the heater wire adap adapter. To insert the humidifier chamber onto the humidifier base, we have to press this blue bar. Then this has to be carefully inserted. And once it is locked, we can hear the click. The inspiratory limb has two components. The first component carries the inspiratory air from the ventilator to the humidifier chamber. This is the second part of the inspiratory limb. It has two ports for temperature sensor, which I will be attaching and showing. This part will be attached to the humidifier. This is the expiratory limb which can be attached to the expiratory port. The inspiratory and expiratory limbs are connected through the Y piece. The Y piece, we attach the flow sensor. The proximal line will be attached to the port provided in the expiratory limb. And the other end is attached to the proximal port of the ventilator. There are two temperature sensors. This is the distal temperature sensor and this is the proximal temperature sensor. The distal temperature sensor is attached to the end of the inspiratory limb. And the proximal sensor is attached to the beginning of the inspiratory limb. The port for temperature sensor on the humidifier is color coded. 
this is the heater adapter it has three components the yellow color coded one will be attached to the humidifier base the butterfly shaped one will be attached to the inspiratory limb and the other one will be attached to the expiratory limb the yellow color coded end will be attached to the humidifier chamber the butterfly shaped one will be attached to the inspiratory limb and the other end will be attached to the expiratory limb this is the water inlet for the humidifier chamber and it has to be always connected to a distilled water chamber so this is the maximum water level which is indicated by the blue colored line and the arrow once the water is filled up to that level it is automatically cut off by using a valve thank you and we have to take any questions